Let's review a little bit on adding and subtracting rational numbers. Rational numbers are any number that can be written as a fraction. Uh, that means that most of our decimals can also count as rational numbers because we can write them as a fraction. Um, on here, we're going to focus mostly on our fraction operations. All right. And the reason is, is decimals, I think I've seen that you guys can do uh, lining up the decimal fairly well, so let's not uh, focus on something I think we can do. Let's focus on something we struggled on and see how to get better. Let's start with addition. Let's take negative 13 sixth plus 7 twelfths. All right. Um, I'm probably pretty good on getting a knowing I need a common denominator. And I normally teach it as, let's figure out what the sign is first. But let's try something a little different. Let's try a different strategy. If what we were working with before isn't helping us, let's see if there's another strategy that works. Let's get a common denominator first. So it looks to me like the common denominator here should be 12. That's already a 12. So let's take this times 2 times 2. Let's do our work of converting our fraction, so we'd have 26 twelfths, negative 26 twelfths. Let's not forget a sign, guys. That's the risk of doing it this way, is you forget a sign, plus 7 twelfths. All right, and let's do our work. Bottom is 12, negative 26. Again, that sign always goes with the top number, negative 26 plus 7. All right, so negative 26 plus 7, it's an addition problem. The signs are different, negative, positive. Let's subtract them, we get 19. Negative 26 is a bigger absolute value. So far, so good. That really should be a mixed number, which you can go ahead and do the work for, but it's negative 1 and 7 twelfths. So nothing too weird here except for I have got to pay attention to this sign from now on at every step of the problem, okay? At every step, did I remember to bring my sign down? You need to really take the time of, am I sure I'm getting all this stuff right and recorded properly? So it's not just an error of, oops, I forgot to write that down. Should be a one there. All right, let's try another one. Let's erase that. Let's do um, negative 4 fifths plus negative 3 eighths. All right, a little more work here. Let's go with the idea of let's get the common denominator first. Looks to me like it's going to be 40. So I have to go times 8 and times 8 times 5, times 5. Again, I'm going fairly quick here. This was something you guys seemed very comfortable with. So 32 is 4 times 8. Again, it's a negative. 3 times 5 is 15. 40, that's a negative. And again, I'll address this. If the negative sign is right out front, it's really going with the top number. And some of you might ask the question, what if there's a negative sign on both the top and the bottom? That is a great question. We will need to address it at some point. All I'll tell you is this. Think about it. A fraction bar is also a division problem. So a negative divided by a negative would actually turn that into what? Something to think about for the future. But for right now, we've just got one negative sign out front. It goes with the top number. All right. 40 on the bottom. Negative 32 plus negative 15. Same sign, let's add them up. That would give me 47. Negative plus a negative is still negative. We can do a little bit of conversion there, something you guys can do. It is still a negative number, negative 1 and 7 fortieths. All right, let's go to a new problem. Let's do a subtraction problem here. The only thing we add in is the fact that we're probably going to need to add the opposite. Negative 4 and 1 7th 
minus a negative 6 sevenths. I do not like subtraction. Add the opposite. So what I really have is negative 4 and 1 seventh plus 6 sevenths. Several different ways you could do this problem. I am going to do the long way, but if you guys can find a shortcut that still gets you the right answer, that is awesome. All right, uh, let's convert this to an improper fraction. So that would be 29 sevenths. Again, I multiplied here, added the 1. This is now just an addition problem. Sweet. In this case, I got my common denominator. I'm good to go. If those are still different, I'll have to do that next step. Let's get my numerator. Negative 29 plus 6. Negative, positive. The signs are different. We subtract the absolute values. 29 minus 6 is uh, 23. Again, I just take the bigger absolute value minus the smaller absolute value. The negative number has the bigger absolute value, so this is negative 23 sevenths. Um, and I can also convert that down to a mixed number. I know it goes in three times. It leaves me with negative 3 and 2 sevenths. All right, let's try. Um, this guy right here, negative 8 and 3 eighths. Let's, let's change that. Let's go with negative 1 and 1 third minus 2 and 1 sixth. All right, it's subtraction. I don't like it. Let's add the opposite. Add the opposite. Uh, let's see here. Let's, uh, let's convert everything here now. Let's get uh, negative 4 thirds plus a negative 13 sixth. Again, I just converted to improper. Uh, Ooh, my denominators are different, but I think all I need is for this to be a 6, so let's do that. Times 2 times 2, so negative 8 sixths plus negative 13 sixths, and off we go. Uh, let's see, that'd be 6 on the bottom, negative plus a negative, it's a negative. I add my absolute values, I get 21 leaving me with a negative 3, and I believe that's 3 sixths after I convert. Again, if you're having trouble seeing that, I did 21 divided by 6. I saw what my remainder was, okay? Um, hey, that 3 sixths will simplify. That's a nice, easy one. So let's do it. Negative 3 and 1 half. All right, so that's addition and subtraction. Um, I'll leave some example problems for you guys to work with. Make sure you're taking your time, checking your answers, and we will go from there.